everyone, welcome back to another out of spec reviews video. You join me at my local DC fast charging station, which I'm actually really excited is offline at the moment because there's a huge, huge update happening in uh, America for DC fast charging. And it has to do all with hardware. And you guys know just a few weeks ago, we put out a video sort of being like, what the heck is going on with charging in America? It's kind of a disaster. And I would say right now is worse than it ever has been and worse than it ever will be in terms of charging reliability. And the reason I say it's worse than it ever will be, at least is my prediction, is because all of this construction going on behind me. I am so excited to share that I think our local Electrify America station is the first station to be updated with their brand new hardware. Coincidence that it's our station? Ooh, I don't know about that. Kind of seems odd that they're doing ours first, but we appreciate it at least. I can do some charging tests and we need the new units. So I'm gonna take you through a little bit about what I know is going on and what you can expect across the network from at least all the information I've received over the last few weeks. <laughs> One of the downsides of our station being offline is cars like this Nissan Leaf, take a look, that just rolled up to be able to charge at this station and it's completely offline and dead. And the same thing actually happened to Alyssa yesterday. And we'll talk about how these things are being communicated. But one of the major problems that has been going on in America, and I've said it over and over, and I think it's important that we keep saying it over and over on Twitter, on podcasts, through YouTube videos, is just documenting our experiences driving electric cars through long distances in America. It's to hopefully instill confidence in drivers to take long trips, and it's also hopefully to show where some of the things aren't working. The expectation is a charger works when you roll up to it. I don't think that's a far cry from what it should be. The Nissan Leaf guy's right behind you. He's trying to plug it now. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> sorry. The chargers are dead. They're offline. And so, um, you know, I don't, I think the expectation should be you roll up to a charger, plug in, and it works as designed. The problem is that's not what, what we've been experiencing in the U.S. Now, many times, uh, depending on your area, charging has been wonderful. And in other areas, specifically where we live, charging, especially with Electrify America, has been truly awful, really bad. And it all comes down to hardware at the moment, for at least the majority of issues. And um, we have noticed, and we've pointed out to you, a lot of the problems with the ABB installed infrastructure that Electrify America selected and put in the ground, and it's just not been working that well. We've noticed 350 amp limitations early on. We had issues with the cables, although those cables are not from ABB, they're Huber Schreer cables, and they have temperature sensor issues, and there's, there's some other cables that I wish they would use, but okay, at the end of the day, these cables are not cheap. They're like 20 grand for one of these liquid-cooled cables. I mean, the costs are crazy. So um, to tell you the story, as far as I know it, when Electrify America started, there were four charging providers uh, installed originally, Episec, ABB, BTC Power, and Signet. Those were the four. Uh, if you guys remember two years ago, this weekend, Electrify America took down at one time the entire I-95 corridor and just shut everything off. And I made a whole video about that. And people were left stranded. We were charging people in our driveway and we had like nine cars around that we were plugging in because we were literally, literally living right on that link in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina where um, a charger just went offline. Now, thankfully, all of that pain led to a really bright future where all of those FSEC units were swapped out for the new Signet units, and those things are pretty rock solid. They give 500 amps, all the juice, they look nice. And now, at least for East Coast, and my dad can confirm, and my friend Tom, who does charging videos, can confirm, charging has been relatively reliable, and long distance traveled has been great. Then, fast forward two years, we've had a really hot summer. We have a huge increase in utilization of high power charging infrastructure. More electric vehicles, of course, are plugging in, asking for more power. You know, we're starting to get into the 250 plus kilowatt range with a lot of cars. And it seems that the hardware here, which is an ABB station, 
couldn't keep up with it. Now, I'm not on the inside. I don't know if that's because Electrify America didn't support the hardware well enough or they couldn't get parts for the hardware. I hear one thing from ABB. I hear another thing from Electrify America. It's not my job to put together why the stations are failing. All I can do is say, hey, I pulled up to a station and it didn't work. And this is BS, basically. And, uh, you know, these are big, expensive installations and they can't be changed overnight as another electric car is pulling in looking at the charging station that's currently offline. Audi e-tron GT, it's a nice one. Oh, well, he's here all the time. Yeah, the e-tron GT? Yeah, Okay. Well, he's a regular. Okay, interesting. Looks really sick. Um, so, okay, not my job to tell you what chargers work and don't. Take a look at the Audi though, that thing looks amazing. It's an RS as well, very nice. So, all I can say is this works, this doesn't, and always have told you that and always will continue to tell that even when they ask me not to share my experiences i'm always going to share my charging experience i think it's really important that we cover it and that's why i'm also covering the positive stories and that is electrify america has announced publicly that they have worked with two charging providers to develop their next generation hardware now i've had a chance to use this hardware but let me give you a little bit of a breakdown of how it works and what's happening. Uh, pretty much you're only gonna see, is my understanding, one type of charger being installed going forward. Maybe we'll see some of the signets going forwards. Maybe we'll see, yeah, I think just some of the signets going in. But for the most part, it's all gonna be these new BTC dispensers. They have a single cable on them, single handle. They are seemingly, they tell me, rock solid. They're designed for high utilization, heavy use, big power. And uh, in, in my impression, they look beautiful. They, the screens are so much snappier. You plug in and they seem to work pretty well. And I say pretty well because the first time I had the opportunity to try charging with one of these chargers was in Baker, California last week. And last week in Baker, California, I pulled up in a BMW iX. Yeah, it was on Friday. Plugged it in, nothing happened. And I was like, oh, the new hardware, this is the what the future of reliability of charging is based on. Didn't work. Moved up to another one, got full power. Okay. Well, not off to a good start with the new units, are we? <laughs> Here's the handle. All looks good. Again, the brand new BTC dispenser, their new unit. Oh, come on. You have to lift up to get the handle to lock in, and then it doesn't recognize that it's plugged into the car. So okay a bit of a bummer first time trying the new chargers literally my first session trying them out i know it's working on that ionic 5 but how about that for fate however i did go back to that station and tried that original unit that didn't work for me and it is working so in the previous episode when i was driving out here from colorado this was the one that i pulled up to first and I mean, it all looks good, it, but for some reason I tried it a few times and it wouldn't activate. So let's see, how about now? Yeah, now it's definitely activating and working great. So my impression is, you know, EA worked with BTC and SK Signet to design the charging hardware for these new units. They uh, all use the BTC dispenser. They look really nice. And I, I really do think they're gonna be pretty reliable. Now they're set up in a split configuration for many of the installations, probably like this one, where they're gonna end up putting in two 350 kilowatt cabinets. There's two suppliers for the cabinets, like I mentioned, SK Signet or BTC. Each have a little bit of a load sharing uh, situation where they're tied together. You're never going to be given less than 150 kilowatts. Really, it's closer to 175 on a higher voltage car is what they're gonna be promising. And, um, you know, so we're the first station to get updated. Basically, they're ripping out all the old crappy stuff. I don't know if that means old BTC stations, old Signet stations, I don't know which ones. Definitely, in this case, at least an ABB station is being ripped out and replaced with the newer hardware. The new hardware is gonna go in and hopefully our reliability is just going to be improved drastically. We'll be telling those stories. We don't know for sure until we start using these stations over and over, but at least for now, we can only hope that the new stations will improve reliability massively. And uh, yeah, I gotta say, this is the first station I've heard of that's being upgraded. I know in Baker, at least, they added to that existing site with new ones. And what do you think, Alyssa? Are you excited for this new hardware? I hope it works. I really, really wish the best for everybody. 
involved. <laughs> well, you actually had a bad experience yesterday. Do you want to I... share what happened? <laughs> sure. So Alyssa, yesterday you rolled up to this station in the Rivian and, and what, what, what happened? So I was at like a super low state of charge. I checked the app and uh, the app stated that all of them but four was online, which is usual. Four, four never works here. You mean station number four, not yeah. all four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. station number four wasn't working. So and you checked the Electrify America app. I checked the Electrify America app because that's the app that I'm using and it correlates with the chargers. Anyways, so I pulled up and I looked at all the screens. All the screens were completely black. We can insert the video here of like what it looked like. Every single charger here and i'm with my mom and my sister we were coming from salida colorado we had a nice girls weekend blah 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 blah, blah. and we needed to charge the car before getting home and we were pretty much stranded in sol and it wasn't good and none of them were working and yeah but then once we checked I checked PlugShare, well I called Kyle, he checked PlugShare, and it said on PlugShare that they weren't available, so I guess I needed to check PlugShare in order to know that the EA wasn't working, even though EA stated that it was still working. So it was just a whole debacle, but now they're this, so. And EA updated their app shortly after you posted about it on Twitter. Yeah, shortly <laughs> after, it was a post. That's and... why we post about these things on Twitter. That's how we get people's attention. Yeah. And basically you had a bad experience, but I think it was only for a few hours that it was probably offline while still showing of available. Of course, the, just the few hours that I would need to use it. Um, right. But you know, <laughs> I, it's not okay. So I'm not gonna say it's okay. They, that all should have been. Right, it's, we should have had a notice on the charger yeah. for the last and week. And also yeah. my mm -hmm. mom, she did call. I don't know why she really called customer service. I told her nothing's gonna come of it. And um, they stated, they're like, oh, well, ma'am, it, it states that it's offline. And we were just sitting there looking at the app, like, no, it actually states that it's online and all of them should be working. Right, and I checked my app too, and it showed as online. Yeah. But then again, an hour or two later, it popped up as being actually offline but it's offline for a good reason yeah. and i think it's for future reliability and that's going to be all of the new hardware going in so i am so excited that we're getting the new stuff i can't yeah. wait to see if we get the btc cabinets or the sk signet cabinets mm -hmm. at this time we don't know which is better or which is worse we don't know if we'll have dedicated 350 kilowatt or if everything's going to be balanced which is their load sharing terminology yeah. but either way no more 350 amp limitation we're getting big boy chargers put in we're gonna be using them we're oh, gonna be yeah, doing all the tests yeah a lot of our cars are well i guess we're kind of 50 50 on ccs and tesla right now but we've been road tripping mainly our ccs cars so we need this to work to be able to show to you guys that it does work right. uh, so we're, we're hopeful yeah we're hopeful. i would say this is a very positive yeah. move forwards i think the only downside here was just the app being a few hours delayed from showing is offline. Also don't understand why they had to pull the whole station offline last night when they started work today. But right. they could have just kept one yeah. online. I don't I don't know. That's but not for us to understand yeah, their processing. They've done it before, so yeah. it's not a shock. That right, not a shock. So, you know, when I was talking to EA this week to be in full transparency mode, I was talking to some of their representatives and I was like, guys, like, you know, what they they're like, Kyle, we're putting in new hardware. We're putting in new hardware. I'm like, okay, but I'll believe it when I see it. They're like, we've done it before. I'm like, I know, but it only matters what happens today. And guess what? Now we're seeing it. This is the real stuff. Not I, even 24 hours later. Do you think it's a coincidence that we're getting the upgrade first? No. <laughs> Not at all. I mean, Loveland, Colorado is just the mecca of charging. This is actually the last charging stop going north on I-25. There's yeah. nothing above this. Yeah. They so, need something at Cheyenne. Seriously. Yeah, Cheyenne. And yeah. they're putting in chargers in Wyoming. So I-80 will be unlocked soon. And it's possible that we haven't seen a rapid expansion or at least fixing on a lot of these chargers in preparation for everything just getting ripped out and new hardware going in. Yeah, I mean, it all could be that. It could all be, you know, COVID delays of everything because that's just supply the chain. To yeah. We're not sure who's yeah. doing what. At the end of the day, we're behind the scenes. We don't get to know all this the backdoor conversations. As raw as we could possibly be. I mean, we don't plan these things. We don't, I don't want to roll up to a charger and it not work. I mean, that's like the worst thing that I want to happen, especially with my mother in the car. Sure. Um, so, I mean, it's just, 
And your mom's an EV driver as well. She is. And so she's a big she's fan a little, of EA. She's, she is. Yeah. yeah. So that's why she's a little upset about this happening. And I just, you know. It's okay. At it's the end okay. of the day, we're getting new units. Yeah. I'm going to be swinging by, just cruising through the parking lot every day, seeing how long it takes them to do it. Not going to interfere with the process. Not going to film anyone you know working on the stations or anything like that that's not our place our place is just to show if chargers work or don't work but there's a lot of hardware here sitting see, in boxes so there's the three big boys yep and then there's two small boys or three small boys so right we're so we're gonna have an extra one uh those could be charging cabinets and then dispensers and it's also possible that they'll be expanding the site because oh, yeah, there's a little, there's a little block right there. There's so a little like block right there. You might be right. So we'll see what happens here. It's really exciting, but I think it's important to say we all recognize, at least in our area where there's heavy ABB installations at the moment, that chargers are dropping like flies. That's a accurate statement. There's no way to say it. I was in Grand Junction the other day and only one of four were working. I mean, that's pretty much everywhere along the West Coast and where we're living right now. It's, there's always maybe one working. Yep. But even if that one's working, you might have to play the, the handle thing. Because also before we went to Salida, the chargers, I had to plug Another in at e least... Another e-tron GT trying to charge. Has no idea. Oh, I so. had to plug it in at least three times before it started to... Well, yeah. it was working, but it would stop working. Yeah, basically, yeah. here's what our recommendation is. Check EA apps before you arrive to chargers. Check plug share before you arrive to chargers, especially in this period when they're going to be ripping out some of the older hardware so you don't end up in a situation like Alyssa or even just the EV drivers we've seen in this 15-minute window that's relying on this charging station to plug in. At the end of the day, really looking forward to getting the new hardware in, so a little bit of hardship today can lead to a better tomorrow. So thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video and we'll catch you on another one soon. You'll see updates on this probably on my personal channel and uh, over on my Twitter. But uh, at the end of the day, the only updates we need are chargers working and why do we even have to make videos about that? I don't know because they should have just been working all along. I don't know why this is such a high expectation of ours that puts stress on all these companies to understand that reliability is number one. We'll see what happens.